Gentlemen and ladies, uh, what I'm working on here today is uh, I've got these two heavy duty C clamps and they had defective screws in them. They've been sitting around for probably seven or eight years. I'm tired of tripping over them and they're, they're useless without the screws. Uh, one screw was broken off and uh, it was seized in there. I had to soak it in penetrating oil, but I did get it out of there. And this screw was in there, but it was uh, it wasn't broken off, but it was so bent that I had to cut it in half in order to uh, get to the straight part to get it out of there. So what I plan on doing today is making new screws for it. I got the steel, got it in the lathe, and uh, that's what's up today. And hope you want to go along with me, and we'll do a little threading and uh, do a little lathe work, a little milling and uh, then we'll have some usable clamps. I don't know if I'll have any use for anything this heavy, but uh, you know, maybe I'll just put these on Craigslist or eBay and so on. So uh, over to the lathe we go. I've got the raw stock chucked up in the lathe and uh, I've got it sticking out far enough that I can finish the first one. This is all in one piece, so the other one is uh, Part of the same bar is back up into my spindle. My bar is uh, 23 inches long. That uh, gives me enough material where I can uh, put a center in here and at the end I can cut that center off where that isn't in there. And then uh, of course it's threaded on one end and it's got the square on the other end, the wrench square. And um, threaded here and necked down here. So. That's my raw stock. This is uh, hot rolled steel. I think I, I paid like 22 bucks for this piece of steel. And if I went with 4140, it would be like 60 plus dollars. So uh, I'm just not going to do it. And uh, yeah, it should be 4140. Should even be probably uh, heat treated 4140, but I'm not going to do it. This will be okay. So over here I've got my I've got my little hand sketch and here you can see the threaded part. It's got a little relief then the uh, the square drive for the wrench and uh, neck down where it contacts the workpiece. So I guess with that we're ready to start cutting on this baby. This is sticking out pretty far so I'll start out by facing off the very end of it and putting a center in it and then I'll support the center with my tailstock and then we'll begin the turning. And we'll start out with the largest the largest diameter and and then we'll do the second largest diameter and then finally we'll turn the very end of it on. Alright.
so occasionally you'll see me touching my live center and uh, what I'm doing is if I pinch it and if I can make it stop it's too loose it, my tailstock tends to loosen up on me so I check it every once in a while and make sure that I've got the proper tension on it So we're motoring along here and the chips are breaking just great and uh, all of a sudden you'll see that they start to get stringy and a little bit more on why that's happening later. Okay guys, I want to demonstrate something to you. I know some of you have a little bit of a rough time trying to get your chip breakers to break chips and I want to show you a factor sometimes that, that is overlooked. If you notice when I started out I was breaking chips pretty well and then kind of towards the middle it was getting kind of stringy and it was kind of a pain in the neck trying to uh, keep the workpiece cleaned off and not throwing these chips around in your face and so forth. But um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, what happens when you uh, cool this down a little bit. I've been pushing this bar pretty hard and it's pretty warm and it's cooled down a little bit so uh, once it gets hot again I'll show you the effects that heat has on breaking chips. Just something to think of. Now I, I, if I was running cooling on this it probably wouldn't be a factor those chips would be breaking right off but but I, I hate running coolant because it just makes such a big mess and um, I'm not cutting tool steel or something like that so anyway I'm going to start up again and I will give you a little demo so if you notice what I'll do is I'll start out and uh, you know the chips will be getting kind of stringy and then I'll put a little bit of cooling air on them and you'll see what happens so hang on <laughs> 